Welcome to the Last Tackle Preview Show as we look forward to round two of Super League. It's been a busy week since the round one fixtures were completed. The ban for John Bazebza at Hulkingston Rovers, a season-ending injury for Michael Shenton have dominated the headlines. We also had the retirement of Luke Robinson as well to contend with this week. We're going to hear from Luke Robinson about his retirement and what forced him into it at the Huddersfield Giants and also hear from the likes of Daryl Powell and Brian Smith as they look forward to a big West Yorkshire derby as Castleford take on Wakefield on Sunday. All that to come right here on The Last Tackle. So a busy week then of Rugby League and uh, no doubting one of the big announcements that caught quite a few people by surprise was the announcement by Huddersfield Giants man Luke Robinson who announced that his career had come to an end, a hip injury forcing him to retire at the age of 31. Let's hear from Luke then. He said it was a very emotional time as he had to tell his teammates he was no longer going to be a Huddersfield Giant. Uh, Luke, big decisions being made. Uh, a weight off your mind in some ways? Yeah, a little bit. I suppose us rugby league players, you don't like, you don't like ever showing that you're hurt. You don't like ever showing that you're injured, and you definitely don't want to quit. Uh, it's something I've been struggling with really for three years. You know, I think people within the Huddersfield Giants, you know, the, the medical staff understand what what I've been going through, but probably my wife and my, my, my parents do more than anyone else. You know, like last year before before one of the games, I couldn't get my sock on. Bef to go to the game, my wife had to put my sock on. It, at that point, that I knew that. It's getting pretty serious, so it's it wasn't a shock to me. Probably was to everyone else, but um, at the same time, like I said before, you know, rugby players don't like showing the hurt, so it was nice somebody else throwing the towel in for me. I, I kind of still don't feel like I've quit. I feel like I've been forced into it, which um, I don't know why. It shouldn't really have that that uh, feeling, but it still does with me. It still feels like somebody else has um, thrown the towel in for me. We look at rugby players as warriors, and there's no doubt you always put your body on the line, but. There's only so much anyone's body can take, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. You know, I'd like to think whatever whatever side I've played in, whoever's watched me, the the the, the thing that I've given with my all for the shirt, and I've given 100%. I felt, I felt like I've done that from the age of seven. You know, I've always been a small bloke who's was 100 mile an hour and trying to knock people out there, 16 stones. You know, so um, I probably think that uh, physics dictated that my body will not going to last forever, and I won't going to be a player that went into me, you know, 37, 38. Just for the way I play the game, my body size. But yeah, you know, I'd like to think you know whatever team I've played for, I've I've I give it my all. When you made the decision and, and had to tell the boys, one of the biggest moments of your career, would you say? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, I'd spoke about my wife and my you know my, my close family and friends, and they obviously knew when this. So I'm gonna try to tie my shoelace. Um, it probably won't fire on the corner, but telling them's one thing. Telling the lads were totally different kettle of fish. I had to, when I had to go and tell the boys, I don't know, I'm a very unemotional person if you ask my wife and I got a lump in my throat um, and it was pretty tricky and blue. I had to finish it off for me but my wife was going mad because say, I didn't cry when I had uh, or get emotional when I had three boy, my three boys but I choked up telling the lads I couldn't play rugby anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that's how it went. And what's the future now? What are you going to be doing? Um, we're going to sit down with the club. The club have obviously been great with me. They've um, took me to see the top bloke in the country. He, I'm getting my hip operation in two weeks. So that's probably at the forefront of my mind at this moment in time. He's getting me my body right, getting it healthy so that I can I can walk again more than anything else and be pain free. Um, and then after that, I've just been told that I'm getting rehabbed. So it's kind of like I'm still a player, really. I'm just the, it's the rubbish bit of being a player where you do loads of training, but don't actually play. And I'm going to sit down with the club. The club have been great, like I said before. I'm going to speak about what my role is going to be or if I've got a role within the club, which you know I think, fingers crossed, I have. And looking back at your career, you've had a fantastic career. What would be the standout bits for you? I've, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've lived out my childhood ambition. Really, I've played 14 years at Super League level, and I've managed to represent Wigan, Cass, Salford, and and Huddersfield. field of, you know, there's been a lot of stuff playing Challenge Cup finals, Grand Finals. But the, the pinnacle for me, and it always will be, is representing my country. Yeah. You know, going to the Southern Hemisphere, yeah. playing against Australia, New Zealand, and Papua New Guinea, the Four Nations, and listening to the national anthem, wearing the England shirt, knowing that, you know, this is this is the England team that you dreamt about growing up as a kid. And I'm, I'm listening to the national anthem, I'm playing. And, you know, not only that, I felt like I acquitted myself really well in that tour. You know, I went over there with no fear and giving it me all, like I always do. and. And yeah, you know, the shirt hangs up in me, you know, on my wall with, with, with pride. And looking at it then, how, how do you think people, what would you like 
people to think about Luke Robinson, the rugby player? I'd like to think that I'm um, I'm a player that sacrificed his probably his personal goals and ambitions for the team. I did everything I could for the shirt I wore, and it'd be nice, really, not only from what the fans think, but I'd like to think the, the sort of players I've played would think the same thing about me that you know I'd, I'd swap my sort of um, personal glory for the for the team and our hard working and I did what needed to be done to to for us to win again. So Luke Robinson then has called time on his career. What a fantastic servant to our game he has been and no doubt we'll see and hear more of him in the media over the next few months as he uh, gets his recuperation underway from that hip operation he has to have. In the meantime, the Huddersfield Giants, they have to go into battle, not just minus the likes of Luke Robinson, but they've also lost Grix with a shoulder reconstruction, expected to be out for five months. No Danny Brough either this weekend and the Giants doing it tough when it comes to injuries. Let's hear from their coach, Paul Anderson, ahead of their clash with the Wigan Warriors. It's a, cl it's a collision sport and injuries are going to happen. But I don't think uh, we've rolled the dice and come up with many, many numbers here, don't we? So it's, uh, it's a tough one at the moment, but yeah, it's, we always talk about one man's misfortunes, another man's opportunity. So there's some young fellas this year, this year, especially early in the year, will get an opportunity. Uh, and looking at the game uh, and Wigan, what do you make of Wigan? Very good team, very physical, uh, as you would expect from Wayne's team. Uh, they've made one or two changes to the things they do. Uh, it's hard to gauge them off the back of round one with, on the mud bath. Uh, and it's the same for us as well. It's hard to gauge off uh, where we're at when you've played two trial games on good services and you, all of a sudden you're in, you're in the quagmire of Saints and it's a similar sort of thing this week. It's forecast nothing but rain Friday, isn't it? So we might get the pitch watered as well, so we'll see what happens. Your home debut this week, Wigan in town. It's been a tough start for the Giants. What, what are you thinking about Wigan? Yeah, they're a good side. Obviously, they've proved over the last few years that you know, they're one of the, the top sides in the Super League and uh, they play a tough, grinding game of football. And um, you know, So for us, you know, we're going to have to be prepared to, to play for the full 80 minutes and um, and yeah, and make sure our kicking game is on and make sure all the little things that, that, we, that, are on the, that we do on the field are, are top, top quality. What was your overall thoughts of Super League? Obviously, you've seen that get probably a game on the telly. You've been involved in it now. What's your first impression? Um, oh, the conditions is a, is a huge factor, to be honest. You know, it's obviously it hasn't got. You know, there's not the same skill in the games because of the, the conditions that we've I've played in so far. So, and it's, it's quite hard to compare. You know, the, you know, obviously the refereeing's a little bit different the way the rucks are refereed and stuff. So, um, it, and it's still been it's been tough. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's you know some big strong boys out there and. Um, you know, it's tough for certain reasons, and um, yeah, it's 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 been enjoyable, and, and um, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting through this little period and getting to play and when uh, you know on some dry tracks. The Catalan Dragons were beaten in the opening week of the season in a pretty dour affair at Wigan. The conditions weren't fantastic. They're back on home soil on Saturday as they entertain Hull FC, but Hull come into this one on the back of a fantastic win over the Salford Red Devils. It's further raised expectations on Humberside, but Lee Radford is more than aware of the expectations on the black and whites. A great start to the season. Raised expectations here? No, nah, they're for the roof anyway. You know, whether we finished bottom of the league last year, the expectation at these, our fans' expectations are, are where they are. And it's great. Um, you know, I just got asked outside, Everybody's tipping Catalan to, to be one of the top teams in the comp. You know, what, what's your thoughts on that? And um, you know, only, only the media tip them. <laughs> you know, it's the media that tip them. It's the media that write every week. Is it a false dawn again at Hull? And you know, it's only the media that write about dawns. You've never read me speaking about dawns or the players. Um, it's just you know, it's to it's to sell. It's to put, I suppose, columns in papers. It's a, it's a it's a tough competition. I think you've got 12 you know, very well-balanced teams. Um, and I think you, know, you might see, particularly early on, bec and because of the injuries to certain sides, um, you're going to see some shock results. But I think you know, after that seventh or eighth round, when the, when the waves die down a little bit, and you'll see the same teams there or thereabouts. Um, everybody's looking for the Leicester City. Um, but you know, we've, got a, we've got a squad that are, are capable of competing with anybody on the day. Um, the key for us, um, a bit like Huddersfield last year, is keeping that squad you know, on the field week in, week out, and it's something we never had the luxury of doing um, last season, unfortunately. So, you know, you're just hoping that you can have a, a good run with your big players on, on the field more often than not, I suppose.
So Hull go to Catalan at the weekend. They'll be looking to make it back-to-back -back wins, as will the Warrington Wolves. They won at Leeds on the opening day of the season. They take on Hull Kingston Rovers, and it's Hull KR minus John Badebs, a ban for that tackle on Michael Shenton. It's caused a great deal of controversy in the game. Four-game ban. Some feel it was excessive, others not happy. It's not long enough. What do you think? Let us know on Twitter, at RL on RY. We have caught up with Hull KR's football manager, Jamie Peacock. I must admit it was before the Bedebza story broke, but he started by telling us he's not missing the rugby league at all. Jamie, you've recently retired from rugby league. The new season's just got underway. Be honest, are you missing it a little bit? Uh, not at all. Uh, when I saw the sideways ice ring come in on a gale force wind at Hull KR on Sunday, I thought, I'm glad I'm in the stand with my five layers on trying to keep warm. <laughs> you started a new role as a football manager at Hull KR. How's that going for you? Yeah, it's good. It's a different challenge. Uh, we're making slow steps in the way we want to go. And uh, I'm glad I'm in this job. It's a job with purpose. So because I've got something with purpose, I'm not missing playing. Was that something that you had in mind early in your career? You wanted to stay within the game once you finished playing? I'm not sure. Early, early in my career, I was not quite sure what I wanted to do. But towards the back end, I knew um, I wasn't going to be a coach. I was going to be in the administra administration side of things. And that's how this role fits. Rovers managed to get a, a late uh, draw against Castleford, the opening game of the season. Daryl Powell, the Castleford head coach, said it felt like a defeat. Did it feel like a, a win for you guys, getting the point on the board? No, it felt like a defeat for us as well. Um, that's how we take it. We, you know, credit Josh Mantelato and our team for being resilient right to the end and, uh, and, and refusing, not, refusing to believe they were beat. Um, but ourselves, we, we see it as a point drop too. Warrington coming up next, uh, they're looking pretty good, beat Leeds, your former side of course, uh, in round one, still a long way to go but they've recruited well in the summer, what are you expecting from them? Yeah, Warrington, um, I, I, they recruited well but I was more impressed by their attitude towards defending their own trial and that's what got them the result against Leeds and I expect it to be the same again um, on Sunday and I expect them to be challenging for the top four and certainly maybe even top place. And finally, the uh, World Club Series coming up. Leeds weren't in it last year, but they're taking on the North Queens and Cowboys this time round. It should be an exciting event for the fans. Are you looking forward to it yourself? Yeah, I'm going to go to the game. I think it's a, it's a great Blue Ribbon event for, for Super League in this country and also for Rugby League worldwide. So I'm looking forward to getting there and seeing 21,000 packed into Edinburgh and, and watch the Rhinos win. Warrington take on Hull KR on Sunday. Michael Shenton is out for the season, we expect, for the Castleford Tigers. They do battle in a big West Yorkshire derby with Wakefield Trinity Wildcats at the weekend. We caught up with Daryl Powell and started asking him about the injury to Michael Shenton. It's a tough one. Um, Michael's been a, a really important member of the, the squad. He's a captain, he's, um, he's a key player, so it's, it's disappointing that um, his season has been pretty much ended by a... Um, a bad injury, it was a pretty bad tackle as well, so that makes it obviously more disappointing that it could have been avoided. But um, yeah, it's rugby league life at times, it's, it's very tough, it's a tough sport. And, and players have the difficulty of, of dealing with injury, and, and obviously Shenny's, Shenny's got that at the moment, which is, is tough for him and for, and for us as a team. But I think, um, you know, I think the players are going to really work hard and, and, and dig in. And, um, and playing his spirit for the rest of the year. So, uh, yeah, whilst it's tough to take, we, we know that um, we've got the players to uh, to really step up and, uh, and make sure we're successful this season. And, and this derby game, obviously, it's always a huge game, but it's the first home game uh, of the season. be good for you to put in a performance and get a result in front of your home fans for the first time. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, playing at home, we were pretty good at home last year. I thought we were tough to beat. We need to make sure that there's uh, there's an edge about us. Uh, you, you're playing in front of your home supporters is is always pretty special, always special when you're playing on a on a stage like like this, which is uh, it's very tight. The fans are very tight to you, and, and there's a there's a bit of a bond between the the fans and the the team at the moment. We wanna we wanna make sure that they know that uh, what we're about this year and. Um, and we've, we've talked a lot about what, what we want to achieve this year. It's about showing that on a consistent basis now. The fact that it's a local derby as well, and it's waiting for them to beat us here last year at home in the first game as well, so we'll be looking to, to write that. Mm. And um, first home game of the season, which means it would have been a good atmosphere anyway, but the fact that it's a local derby, it's going to be uh, roaring here. Yeah, hopefully uh, the, the ground will be bouncing. You know, it's, it's an old-school ground, so you get a lot of the... A lot of fans on top of you, and the atmosphere is fantastic. You know, I absolutely love it down here. So, 
you know, it's one of these games that's going to be packed out at rafters and, you know, it's going to be a quite hostile, but these are the games that you look forward to and enjoy playing it. So not all doom and gloom then this week for the Tigers. As you saw there, Oliver Holmes has signed a new contract with the Tigers. He's been joined as well by Adam Milner, the hooker. He signed a new deal. And news breaking later in the week that Andy Lynch is going to go for at least one more season, possibly two, with the Castleford Tigers. So the Tigers acting to tie up some key troops for next year. They do battle with the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats on Sunday. The Wildcats well beaten by Widness. Maybe not in the scoreboard, but certainly a few things to work on for Brian Smith's side. And Brian Smith is keen to take the positives out of the defeat to Widness on Sunday. It's not the result you wanted, but I suppose some positive foundations there going into uh, taking into the rest of the season. Yeah, I think so. I think we, we had a bit more uh, strength about us, a bit more toughness about us, and certainly some resilience in terms of fighting back after a try was scored I thought we were in the game in the final 10 minutes and we just weren't quite good enough to to get over top and that largely was contributed by some some errors ourselves so I think when you get to the point where if you can tidy up errors and you know you you're going to be in games of footy you can sort of gain some confidence from that without a win a win would be great though Physical game against Widness. A lot of teams have uh, been counting their injury wars. How have you been? How are you looking on that from? Yeah, we picked up a couple of niggly ones, but nothing's uh, nothing terrible this week. So uh, we'll be very close to what we played with last week. I think, our, as I said, I, I think our guys did pretty well, and you know we certainly want to uh, build on that if we can. And perhaps the best way to do that is by trying to retain and, uh, a, a pretty stable squad as we go. We all know what this uh, this derby means against Castleford. I suppose you won't need to rile up the players. They all know what this means to the club. Yeah, I think so too. You know, there's a, um, a lot of guys that are not from around here in in both teams for for that matter. But uh, I think everybody gets it. Even you know an old Aussie like me can work out that it, it means a lot to the fans. So an extra special effort is is in store. A great time to uh, really put down a marker as well, isn't it? It would be, yeah, for us. We we have enormous respect for the quality of the, the team and the football that they, the rugby that they play. Uh, you know, Cass have, have they surely be they'd be, I'd imagine they're shooting for you know top four and maybe grand finals and all that sort of stuff with the momentum that they've generated in the last couple of seasons, a few seasons now. Brian Smith there talking ahead of the West Yorkshire Derby. It's Cass against Wakefield on Sunday. Hopefully one of them will get their first win of the Super League season. Witness, they'll be looking to make it two wins out of two. They entertain Leeds Rhinos on Sunday afternoon. Leeds, of course, without Danny Maguire out for possibly two months with that knee problem. Leeds have acted quickly. They've made Rob Burrow their new acting captain in the absence of Danny Maguire. So far, only one week in, it's been a very, very exciting season. Our man Phil Kaplan caught up with Blake Solly of Super League and started by asking him what his highlights were of last season. Probably not one single memory. I think that there's lots of um, really good parts about last year that I, I think very kindly of or very fondly of. I think the World Club Series, uh, again, I think people now, really, because it was such a success, um, people don't realise how big a risk it was at the time that going from one to three and getting three teams over from Australia who hadn't qualified by merit, um, were invited but really keen to play. Um, so that was a big risk and then obviously the bonus was when Russell said he was coming here instead of the Oscars. That made a huge difference. So that was one of the things I look back with really, really fondly that, you know, having tried for 10 years to get World Club Series off the ground, to do it so well, and obviously the added bonus of, of Russell coming and making such a splash. Um, some of those games along the way during the season, so when Castleford beat St Helens at the jungle um, by a point, I look back and that was when I think everyone started to accept that every minute did matter. And I remember looking at watching that game and, and as I do now, sort of second screening with the Twitter feed and just seeing the explosion of interest through the second half um, was great. Uh, and then obviously that, that Super 8 phase, um, the Challenge Cup final uh, with Lizzie Jones' performance, I think everyone would um, say that was hugely memorable. It was interesting talking to Jim Mullen at Labbrooks, the CEO, who said that um, you know, he was so proud to be involved in the sport on the back of that day and then the grand final selling out I think we were you know, everyone was sort of almost a sort of chicken licking mentality that you know the RFU and the World Cup's in town it's going to be Eddie Haddon and we're going to be in 
um, trouble or we're going to find it difficult to sell out. Well, we sold out quicker than we ever have before uh, and they were the ones who were struggling across town. In terms of, um, you mentioned that sellout game, yeah. you were one of the very few administrators right at the very beginning that put your head above the parapet yeah. and said, I'm going to be measured by certain KPIs, yep. things like more commercial partners coming in, yeah. more sellout games, um, more profile in the media. Yeah. In some of those areas, although it was an exciting season, you didn't hit target. That's Would the, that be a disappointment? Oh, it was, yeah, absolutely. It was, um, you know, we had sort of the big five targets were um, uh, increased commercial revenue, which we did. We, we hit our targets. Um, we wanted to um, increase the visibility and profile of the sport. And I don't think anyone, when you look at through the course of the season, the things like Russell in London and, and, and Kevin with Spotty, we did. There's no doubt that. But by the same token, you have lost, for example, uh, bespoke correspondent on the Manchester Evening News. So yeah. for every swing, there has been a little bit of a roundabout. Yeah, and, and, and I think some of that um, is uh, structural. Uh, you know, I think, you know, I'm not, uh, you don't have to be a great media commentator to realise how under pressure regional news is. Um, and I think that that's, you know, the, the modern world. I, I look at our social media numbers and they're going through the roof. So I just think people are ingesting their news in a different way. Um, coming back to those, those, those big issues, you know, the sellouts was the one we didn't hit. You know, I think we made a real success of World Club Series, but we wanted 10 sellouts and we ended up, I think, getting to five over the course of the year, which was disappointing. Um, you know, sort of on my lighter days, it was five more than we had the year before, but um, we were really, really close to 10. Um, you look at some of the games that were at 95% of capacity and um, either we didn't get it right um, or we didn't work with the clubs well enough to get to the 100%. So a lot of things to learn, but um, I've got no doubt we'll get 10 this year. I think we all that learning from 2015 we'll take away and put into 2016. So Blake Solly there, you'll be able to see more of that interview with Phil Kaplan on TV Yorkshire in the next few days as well. It promises to be another cracking week of Super League action. However you support, best of luck to your team and best of luck as well to Gareth Ellis who could be making his long-awaited comeback after that Achilles problem in France on the weekend. Let's find out a little bit more about Gareth Ellis. Here he is scrumming down with TV Yorkshire. Gareth Ellis, Hull FC. Mrs. Neither. <laughs> what do you drink then? I don't really drink, to be honest, but if, if I'm choosing, I'd choose lager. Oh, um, Dubai. Uh, Headingley. Um, Wigan. Uh, I'm a celebrity. Um, I don't have one, I'm boring. <laughs> the worst trainer? Um, Leon Price. Best. Um, Jack Downs. <laughs> uh, Richard Whiting. Sporting Idol. Um, Ellery Hanley. <laughs> <laughs> 